All right, good evening, everybody. And I tell you what, these round tables have become uh, one of the most popular things we've started doing here on Brevard Sports Network. I'm Alan slaughter -Zinski, and we've done them with Suntry Vera Youth Football. We've done them with Uberzati. And tonight, we have some of the ladies with Beachway Volleyball Club. When I say some of the ladies, we have the most important lady here tonight. She is club director and uh, also the head coach for the O'Galley Commodores Volleyball Club. Uh, she is Michelle Rycroft. Uh, Coach, welcome to your roundtable here tonight <laughs> at Walk-Ons. Thank you, Alan. I always love seeing your face. Well, I, I you know, I, that I would believe you if you didn't say it with such uh, grinting teeth. I there. just love you that much. <laughs> no, you love Caleb. Oh, I do. Caleb. Caleb, I miss you. I wish you were here today. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, why don't you go ahead and introduce the two coaches you brought? Yeah, so I brought uh, Lynette Shannon House. Uh, Lynette coaches my 14 elite team for this past 2021 season, also my 15 premier white team. Lynette is also our grass league uh, coach. We have grass leagues. We'll go into more a little bit about that. She's also my assistant at O'Galley High School. Lynette is everywhere, and I love yes. that. And the other everywhere you are. Yes, <laughs> I love that. And the other person that's everywhere is Audrey Nelson. Audrey coaches my 13 premier team this past year. Uh, Audrey also coaches my beach program. Audrey also is everywhere I am. Both of these ladies, they've been with me for the last three years. I couldn't have done it. I couldn't do it without them. Um, the girls love them, which is most important as a club director you want to get likable coaches coaches that know what they're talking about coaches that people want to work hard for and Lynette coach Lynette and coach Audrey are those people for uh, me at Beachwave now no program is complete without bringing a parent along yes. to really kind of I guess I don't want to say justify but you know parents they love and they hate these programs they do i mean that's the fa that's a fact of the matter and today we have christy dalton with us whose daughter is kiana and uh kiana pretty much plays everything doesn't she yes yeah Ki yeah, yeah yeah kiana plays and we're going to talk to christy about beachway volleyball club why she would recommend the club what she likes about it Maybe we can even draw out of her maybe what she doesn't like about not kidding, Coach. We all hey, love Hey, I'm every always up to learning pros and cons. That's what we do at Beachway after every tournament, so <laughs> no better time than now. All right, so let's just get started with the basics, Yeah. the mission statement. Yep. Now, I love your mission statement because the one thing, when I coach, you know, we I've broadcast with Coach DeMarcus Manyfield, <clears throat> and he could send his daughter to play anywhere. He picked the Beach Wave Volleyball Club, he told me, because he likes the philosophy. Yeah. And, and I asked him, I said, well, to you, what is that philosophy? On paper, it says Beach Wave Volleyball Club's mission is to spread the sport of volleyball to anyone willing to learn, to teach players life lessons on and off the court, to help further their knowledge through teamwork, sacrifice, and dedication. BWVC, Beach Wave Volleyball Club, is focused on developing into a nationally prominent junior club. Here's the thing that I love about your yeah. mission statement. It's all to prepare players for the collegiate and national volleyball level. That's what he liked. He said the thing he liked the most was that you said the goal here is to win. That's what we want to do. Yeah. Tell us about Beach Wave in your words. In my words, well, um, we play to win is what I've always said. We practice to win. We play to win. We show up to win. We don't... You know, sports in general teach so many lessons to girls and boys on and off the court. We have opportunities for these players to learn things that maybe players, people that didn't play sports, you know, I know growing up for me, many of my life lessons were on the court, on the field. Um, playing to win means we work hard every time we show up. And if we don't win, at least we're, we're, we're trying our best. Giving up and, and, and not giving 100% is sort of not what we do around here right yeah you know I, I like and 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 I love the fact that you share this with your student athletes you hate to lose <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that is there no uh, 
I, I don't think so, at least. No. Uh, you know, I'm okay with a loss. I'm okay if my team works hard and we got outplayed. I'm okay if we gave everything on the court. We tried our best. We might have made more unforced errors than the other team, and and we gave them the win, or they they outright beat us. I'm fine with that. What I'm not okay with is not the is is working hard is number one. Showing up for your team is very important. Making sure that you sacrifice for your team and you expect your teammates to do the same. All right. So with all of that said, and, and I think that's very well put. With all of that said, let's talk about this year. Yeah. Um, this was a very difficult year coming off of last year because a lot of this year still had to deal with all of the COVID restrictions. Were you going to play? Weren't you going to play? Was this team going to be there? What was going to happen? Waivers signed. I mean, it was, it was yeah. a mess from that standpoint. But you all seemed to weather the storm, first of all, uh, perfectly, I felt. How did you all deal with that? Uh, anybody want to... Well, from a coach's perspective, a lot of the stuff like on the court didn't really change necessarily, like them playing and working hard at practice and stuff. So that kind of stuff didn't change. So I try to really like focus on, listen, everything else is going crazy. You might be having to quarantine left and right at school because of the where you're sitting in class, but everything here is the same. So just keep working hard there. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing I was thinking about too. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Wearing the mask for the girls was a, was was a struggle to have them play in a mask. They they most of the girls didn't like it. I have some girls that loved it. They were they were like, you know what? We're in COVID and I'm and they bought they did it. They did it religiously. They wore their mask at practice and we were totally fine with that. AAU did not require the girls to wear a mask at practice. They did require the girls to wear a mask during games and on the bench. They required coaches to wear the mask. Um it was difficult for me as a coach to relay the message, but it, it just required more communication and, and just making sure the girls were prepared on game day, especially. What, uh, as you go back, as, you, as I look through uh, your program teams yeah. here, let's talk about them. Um, talk, recap it for us. What, what, what did you like about this year with your program I teams? Had, I had 11 teams this year. Um, we, you know, my favorite is practice to watch practices is, is the 11s team the 12s girls those girls are so they're cute and they are ruthless you know i walk into a practice with those 11s that 11s team my coach over there uh ali ali slotty i walk in and those girls are just fighting tooth and nail you know when they get older they might have more there's more skills so they don't have to maybe scramble as much but with the little girls it was a lot of fun i had 11s team a 12s team uh, Marcella Vasquez, she does a great job with that with the 12s team. Um, she helped she helped kind of groom that 11s team as well. Uh, my 13 premier coach was Coach Audrey. Uh, that's where Kiana played on that team. I had a thir I coached the 13 elite team. Uh, we had three 14s teams, two the three 15s teams, and a 16s and a 17 teams. I had 12 coaches. Every one of my coaches are educated coaches. They are smart. They play the game. They understand the game. And they know how to break down every skill to teach these girls how to do it correctly. What is, uh, Audrey, what sets you apart? How would you describe your coaching style? Um, I think that I am really good at coaching basic skills. I mean, I've been playing volleyball since I was 12 years old, and so I, ha I have a lot to bring to the table. I work with small children in my real job, and so it translates nicely to the youngsters that we're coaching now. Um, and I'm kind of that nurturing coach. Like, I always think they can do it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear I can't do it because whatever you think, you're absolutely right. Um, so I just try to encourage them to be the best, do the best that they can do. That's all I want. I can't ask for any more than that. And you, you are originally from Colorado. Yes, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about how, Lynette? I, I got the pleasure to watch you coach uh, for a couple of matches last week at uh, AAU National Junior National Championships. How would you describe your coaching style? I would say I'm very similar to Coach Audrey. I am very like you can do it. Listen, this is. This is what you need to do when like we're at timeouts i'm like this is what you're doing wrong you need to do this this and this so i'm very like breaking it down simple for them and i just get i try to be super encouraging and like i try to be the most excited person on the sidelines when they get 
that block or an ace or a kill or something and just really try to keep them positive. I'm like, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up. You have to roll with it, get over it, and move on because the Stay game's going to keep going. I think it speaks volumes that a club director hires coaches polar opposite of herself. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, both of these coaches, are they are both – She's a kindergarten coach, and she's a speech pathologist for elementary school age kids. Right. That is the opposite. <laughs> right. I am, I, listen, I was a preschool teacher in college, and right. I, I loved it. I think it's great. I, I, that, I, I don't. Nowadays, I am. I'm ready to win and coach volleyball. The little kids, I adore, but I couldn't do it all the time. I, I, my playing style is very different than my coaching style. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 well, I'm sorry, what would you say? I laugh because my playing style is very different than my coaching style. <laughs> Audrey is a beast on the court. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because I, I recently did a sit-down with Uberzati, and when I asked all of the coaches there and trainers, what's the one thing that you've learned from Uberzati working here, being a part of this, all of them said what my coaching style is and how important it is to the student athletes that are learning from me. So coach, tell everybody about your coaching style. I have extremely high expectations is the first thing I would say when I'm coaching volleyball. Uh, you know, I give, I'm intense and I'll be the first one to say it, sure. but I also have a lot of love. I'm the type of coach that will push them to out of their comfort zone to that's the only way they're going to get better. That's the only way they're going to build and is be uncomfortable, right? But if if I'm pushing them and pushing them, I'm also going to put my arm around them and say, hey, great job, nice try. You know, I will – there's always a positive with a critique, always. Um, I'm somebody that I know the girls can rely on. I know the girls will be educated by, and I know the girls – I have a relationship outside the court with every single player I coach. Every single girl – I have, I either, we text, we talk, we, we, I go to lunch with them, I go to lunch with their parents. Um, my coaching style is not just on the 900 square feet. Right. I am outside the gym. I am a type of coach that you can rely on me, you can call me. I am, as much as a player needs me, I will give as much as they need. You know, before we take our first break here, um, I think it's important, we talked about the mission statement and your coaches, but I think... If everybody knew how passionate, first of all, people need to know how passionate you all are, especially you about your club, yeah. about Beach Wave Volleyball Club. But I think people need to realize why are you so passionate about Beach Wave Volleyball? You started this yeah. in 2015. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how where your passion comes from. I've always been very competitive, even as a child. You know, uh, sport to me, it molded me. It, it framed who I am as a, as an adult. Um, you know, I was, I'm somebody that I take this very seriously. I take my job seriously. I respect the girls. I, sh I show the girls that I love them. I want them to work hard, but showing up and not doing their best is not acceptable. And we gotta, we gotta work through it, you know? So, yeah. um, growing up, I played everything but volleyball. And when I found volleyball, I quit everything. It was only volleyball. And I was fortunate enough to have coaches that groomed me and that took me under their wing and showed me love outside of the sport and showed me that it's more than just coaching. It's more than bump set spike. It's everything else. It's the character. It's integrity. It's morals. It's things that happen off the court that, sh that make you who you are as an adult. And I take that very seriously. And, and the learning process to get there for those life's lessons and how you learn them. Is, is tremendously important. All right, I'm going to ask you this question yeah. first. And I'm going to ask you all the same question. And, Christy, you're going to have the final say before we take the break. So you get the opportunity to think about the answer. There are volleyball clubs everywhere. There are several in Brevard County. There's plenty in Orlando. People go as far as Tampa to do volleyball. Why is Beachway Volleyball Club different, Coach? I've said this in the past, and I'll say it again. We are a family at Beachway. We have a relationship with the girls and their siblings and their aunt, and their aunts and uncles and their grandparents and their parents. You know, um, we make it a point to, you're spending time with us, you're spending money. You're giving your child our trust to, to take care of that kid. And we wanna show that we are worthy of that. And at Beach Wave, 
I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere that I need to be as a director. There's not going to be somewhere that I don't show up. There's not going to be somewhere that I'm not taking responsibility for. And I think it shows, you know. Um, there's times where people might say I might be too involved, but it's my, it's my passion. It's my love. It's your company. It's my company, but it's also my passion. Sure. I, 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 when I worked for other coaches, I was still everywhere. Even though it wasn't my company, my business, I was still everywhere I needed to be because I want to be somebody that you can count on, you can rely on, and I'm dependable. Lynette, you can't say family. What makes Beach Wave Volleyball Club stand out? Oh, we can't say that? No. Well, I just see. said family. But you could say family. It's I know. Fine. That's the best answer. Sorry. <laughs> um, I would just say that, like, I've only started coaching club for Coach Michelle, and I wasn't sure that I really wanted to do it at first. I always co coached high school, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really sure, and I was an assistant coach for one of her past coaches, and I just really liked how, how much Michelle is everywhere. I can come early to before one of my practices, watch her practices. I'm like, oh, this is a great drill. She's always like, hey, you can do this. I can always ask her questions because I'm like, I need some help. I need, I need some new ideas. She has tons of ideas. She's always there at practice. She makes it a point if we're at the same tournament to come and be on the bench with the girls and help coach and give her two cents. And I really, truly just love the girls on all my teams I've ever coached. They're just some of the greatest people ever. I'm like, man, you guys sometimes drive me crazy, but I'll tell you what, you are the best, <laughs> some of the funnest kids to be around. So. Audrey? Um, so I guess my opinion is that I really love um, the culture here at Beach Wave, and that's like our, just in a general, like the parents, the players, the coaches, like the culture here at Beach Wave. Michelle has a beginning of the year meeting where she's like, this is what I expect from you, and this is what you're going to get in return. Um, and she holds everybody to that standard no matter what. She shows up, everybody knows her face, everybody sees her all the time. You know, and as a coach for her, I'm like, all right, well, what do you want me, how do you want me to run this? And she lets me have my reign as long as it's within her parameters, um, which I think is awesome. I have to say that I have also had, I've been coaching teams where I've fallen in love with the players and their parents are awesome and I don't, it just, just like the overall general culture, I've gotten to really um, affect some lives and affect some girls, and um, they've affected me in return, and it's all been super positive. I've had a great experience here. And this is not the first place I've coached, and I just think it's amazing what she's got going here. I, I think that those are all three really great answers. Christy, you can say anything you want. You can repeat. But, okay, so let's go back. Why Beach Wave as a parent? Why did you choose Beach Wave Volleyball Club? Well, all three of those were great answers, and I agree with all of what's already been said. But as a parent, so my husband and I have played since we met. We've been married for 20 years now. So when our daughter showed an interest in playing, we were both super excited. So it was very important to us to find um, – she's young. I mean, she's 11 now. She started playing for Michelle when she was 9. And she – it was very important for me to have some place that she wanted to be and that she loved it and was also learning at the same time. Gotcha. It's very hard when you have the little ones to foster both the love of the game and getting them to stay focused, focus, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> focus and, and really learn the skills as well. And these coaches do an amazing job of that. So ultimately, that's that's why we're with uh, each. I, I tell you what, that that's that's a that's a big time answer right there because. Yeah, you, you, you kind of get it. Coach, if you could change one thing about the club on the fly, what would it be? Facility. Yeah. I want, that has always been my goal. You know, I don't just want a beach wave volleyball club facility. I have big plans. I'll keep them to myself. But I have big plans. And without these coaches and without parents and players that believe in my philosophy and understand I am here, I, I want to be a part of your family, you're definitely a part of mine. Um, but facility is the one thing, and that is on the horizon. Um, but, you know, Outstanding. that's the one thing I would. All right, we're going to step away. We're here at the beautiful new walk-ons in Vieira. I'm telling you what, if you're looking for a game to, uh, or a place to watch a game, this is the spot. Jim yeah. and his staff do a terrific job here. Always a great greeting at the door. And I tell you, we need to get a Beachway Volleyball Club up there. A uh, little ball up on that shelf with Done. the rest of those football helmets. Done. Infiltrate those helmets. 
We'll step away. We'll be back here. We're going to talk next segment about the different programs, beach, sand, court, all of it, right here on Brevard Sports Network. Beach Wave Volleyball Club will have many club tryouts July 11th at Wickham Park Community Center starting at 1 p.m. Make sure you visit our website, beachwavevolleyball.club, for all information. It all started with a sketch on a napkin, an idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Hi, this is Michelle Rycroft with Beach Wave Volleyball Club, and you're watching Brevard Sports Network. All right, welcome back here to Walk Ons here in beautiful Vieira. Again, thanks to Jim and his great staff. All right, we've talked about volley, our uh, Beach Wave Volleyball Club, the concept, uh, the passion behind it. Now we want to talk a little bit about some of the programs that you offer. And I absolutely love these programs. And Coach Lynette, we're going to start with you uh, because you, you handle the grass. Tell us, what is the, the, the grass club, the grass program for Beachway Volleyball so Club? So Grass League is Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 10.30. We get out there in the morning, try and beat any afternoon rain. Um, and it's really good for the girls that are newer to volleyball that don't have all the foundational skills yet they get out there they can play they learn the skills we do about 45 minutes of skills training and then the second half of the time we're out there they get to just play four on four grass style and they really seem to love it i, I tell you it's um i didn't realize there were that many different aspects to it when we get to the sand fleas we're going to talk about how this all leads into ultimately you know the sport growing now, Coach Audrey, you do beach, and if you look at the statistics on beach, it is the fastest growing NCAA sport out there. Hands down, no question about it. Tell us about Beachway Volleyball Club's beach program. So we are doing beach on Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 10.30. Uh, we're also trying to beat the rain. We've been very successful thus far. Um, I don't know, one of the things I really love about beach is that there's, you know, it's just a great way to hone all those skills, mm -hmm. higher speed, stamina, agility, and you're really working on all that extra ball control. Um, I don't know, we've been having a great time out there. I what? think all the, we're, we're kind of the same way where we're doing about 45 minutes of skills training and then we're just, we're just playing. Do the girls even realize what, because when I talk to the student athletes and I ask them, why do you, and I'm going to ask Christy this about um, Kiana, they, they swear by beach. What is it? I mean, what is it about, because first of all, I can't jump in the sand, period, end of story. What is it about beach that these girls love so much? So my personal opinion, uh, one of the things I really enjoy about beach volleyball is that I always get to touch the ball. Yep. When you're playing indoor yeah, okay. and there are six people there, you might the ball might volley three or four times where you don't get a hand on it. And I am not trying to be involved and not there. You know, I right. want to be touching the ball. Um, so that's one of the things I like. I like it because it's harder. It's more difficult. Gotcha. Um, and I think that the girls um, really try to work hard. And I don't know. They just have a good time. It's like you pick one best friend and you go out and you're partners and you have a great time it doing what you love. It seems to me yep. they turned a cookout sport into a national phenomena is really what it's because you, I mean, you used to go to cookouts on the beach, right? And you're playing beach volleyball. The next thing you know, you got beach volleyball in the Olympics. And I'm like, what, what the hell is this? Right? I'm like, this is great. I loved it. Why does what, – what now, Kiana does all of this, right? Beach and – what does she love to do the most? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, she loves indoor. She loves the team aspect of indoor. Mm -hmm. um, but like Audrey said, you know, when you're out on the beach, you get that much more opportunity to touch the ball. Yep. Um, and she loves everything about that. Um, I, I don't think she could pick one that she likes better, honestly. Um, and, and, and it all, and, uh, and the beauty of Beachway Volleyball Club is she can do all this, and it fits into your she schedule. She does do all of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She yeah. does. And it yeah. fits into your schedule. Yes. I mean, how do you yeah. all manage that? Uh, teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, we have a lot of, 
as they were talking about community and family, you know, we've developed a lot of friendships with other parents and right. the other girls and, you know, hey, can you pick up or drop off today or can you go and, you know, I'll pick up or whatever. So there's a lot of that going on too. That's awesome. Yeah. Co Coach, one of the greatest inventions in the history of Brevard County sports <laughs> is sand fleas. Yep. The sand fleas program is phenomenal because I owe, and you know how much Brevard Sports Network pours into youth sports. And yep. when I say youth, I literally mean from the five-year-olds up, Sand Fleas is, is that. Tell us about Sand Fleas. Sand Fleas is our little kid program. It's for five-year-olds to 12-year-olds on Friday nights at Wickham Park Community Center from 6 to 7 p.m. $10. Come drop in. Come play for an hour. Um, at Sand Fleas, we're doing a lot of skill stuff. Uh, we're doing a lot of begin learning how to pass, learning technique, learning footwork. Um, Sam Fleas is ran by Julie Davila. Um, she couldn't make it tonight, but she she uh, she approached me about this, like, hey, you know, because she has little kids, and I and I was like, let's go. So I'm at I, I'm at Sam Fleas on Friday nights. I'm at Grass League on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday mornings. I'm at Beach on Tuesday, Thursday mornings. Um, we make sure that we just provide something for everybody. I know not everyone's going to love beach. Some girls only really love grass volleyball. Some girls only really love beach volleyball. Sand Fleas is an opportunity where we can get a, get a hold of the, the young kids in this county. Truth be told, yeah. you were you're a court girl, aren't you? Indoor. I prefer court. I, yeah. I, I do. I mean, I play. I play beach. Grass is actually a lot of fun. Audrey and I kind of secret, not secretly, but grass we, is my favorite. Grass. Uh, yeah. I like grass because it's it's. Beach is more difficult. You're in that five inches of sand. You have to really dig in that sand. Gra beach is a lot of, um, you have to have a lot of endurance. Yeah. But grass is kind of like the mix between the two, if you will. Um, grass is four on four. Beach is two on two. Indoor is six on six. I played indoor as, a, as an athlete. I play indoor as, a, as an adult. I like it. Um, for me, it's, I like the strategy of it. I like, I like the team camaraderie of it. Um, I like now I don't really jump anymore because I'm just no I get it old. <laughs> <laughs> believe me I understand but I like to pretend I'm a setter on my on, on indoor whenever I play so it's fun I love it um, ladies let me ask you this now that we know about all the programs that beach has to offer and and, and what Beachway volleyball club is as you look back at this year mm -hmm. and the tournaments in your teams start with you coach Lynette how would you assess your team's year um I would definitely say with both my different teams we they definitely learned a lot they they were on the not necessarily the younger age but they definitely grew their skills a lot throughout the season and it was interesting I coached a, like she said a 14 elite team and a 15 premier team and just like just that one year of age difference and they had just so many different skills that they were like one team had like together right. a little bit more than the others it was just interesting to see but these girls worked really really hard so as long as they learn something and they had fun they still love volleyball they want to keep playing volleyball we had a successful season we, we combined both Lynette's 14 elite team and her 15 premier team for nationals this year yeah. Lynette's the shortest one on her 14s team yes they are well the libero okay and one of our setters i got you okay we were, we were the shortest three every other girl on my team was taller than me more so. taller than her so I'm jo i always joke I, around but that's a little shorty on i team. was like all right well <laughs> we're at least getting these touches on this block i mean every let me say this the teams that Coach Lynette coach, they love her. They they request her for the next season. They want to keep Coach Lynette. Um, you know, so we combined both teams for nationals this year. And you know, it's it's a struggle when you put two teams together that haven't that have only played together for three four weeks. You know, right. but Lynette is somebody that's a very positive coach. She's somebody that's going to teach you the read the why behind what she's saying. And she's the most energetic coach on the sideline. I watched her. Yes, I watched her. Yeah, I watched her. <laughs> it's her. a fun thing to watch. Coach, how would you assess your team this year? So I had the 13 premier team this year, and I had a good mix of kids. I had some that were new to volleyball, some that had been around volleyball for a while, um, and it was it was really interesting to watch how they all gelled together. That's one of my favorite things is that all my kids got along really well. 
And there's nothing yeah. worse than playing on a team where there's like one or two mean girls. So I was really proud of them for being able to all get along together. And we started in one place and we finished much higher than where we started. Yes. And as a coach, there's nothing I love more than teaching a skill at practice and watching it come to, to light in a tournament. Like, oh, we got it. That's awesome. Um, so, and I'm kind of like Lynette. I am high fiving everybody. I love it yep. when the exciting stuff happens, and I, I couldn't be prouder of where my team started and where they finished. Um, Coach Rycroft, yeah. before I ask you, I'm going to talk because I had the opportunity to see your team from start to finish this year, and the thing that I noticed more than anything at at, at the AAU is you played against a lot of teams that were athletically better in terms than, than you were. Um, they just were. But they weren't a team. They weren't better coached. And to watch your girls perform at Daytona back in January, February, whenever it was, and to watch them over the last week, and I, th I, I, I told you this last week, it was awfully impressive. I don't know how you were going to surmise your entire season, but to know that I seen your, I've seen your team from start to finish this year, and what I saw at AAU Junior Nationals was one of the best coaching jobs I've seen in a long time in any sport is the God's honest truth. Congratulations on what I thought was an outstanding job there. Thank you. I had my 13 elite team there the first four days of nationals. Um, that team, I have some tall girls on that team. That 13 elite team, I have four girls that are playing up. I have four girls that are 12 years old. And of those four, two of them never leave the court. Um, so those girls, I play girls up. I play Kiana, Kiana Dalton. She's an 11 year old playing on Coach Audrey's 13 premier team. Like I said before, we will play girls up if they can compete, right? Um, my 13 elite team, they did a great job at nationals. Um, that team is running a more complex offense than the teams that we played against. That team is running a more complex defense. The, other, the teams we played against are running high balls, high twos, free balling. We're running quicks, free ball plays, yeah. pushes, slides at a 13 and 12's age. I push these girls to the point where I want them to compete. They might not see the results they want right now. But give it a year or two, and if you keep playing at this high level, you're going to blow past these other the, your, your opponents. Now, my 15 elite team, that team's been together for three and a half years. Um, it's hard to keep that eight, that many girls together for that long, you know, and I hope in the future we can continue to do that. I have plans to do that. Um, that team doesn't have a lot of size, but they jump through the roof, and they work harder than any other team that we play against. And... Um, they were they were nine and three for the tournament. They got third in the Sapphire Division, which is it's a breakdown a breakdown for AU. Yeah. They got third in their division, which is great. I won it first. They all won it first. It was a tough loss, but um, what we went through this season as a group, as a club, going through COVID, we're playing through masks, going through protocols, not sure if we're gonna play, quarantining for two weeks, and then turning around and having to go play in North Carolina yeah. with my 15 seed. I mean that team. We got we got quarantined from Atlanta, as many teams did from that from that tournament. We had to sit down, sit out for two weeks, and then next thing you know, we're on a flight to go to North Carolina after one practice, missing for three weeks. And that 15 team, it's they're fine. They're ready to go. Like, yeah. They they it's no skin off their back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I tell you, it was impressive to watch, and I'm excited next year to get a yeah. little closer to some of the other teams. What a lot of lessons learned for me this year in terms of being able to cover volleyball. How long did it take you as a parent, Christy, to understand, A, the schedule, okay, at a tournament? Because I'm telling you, I just got all that. Um, but how would you assess the year? You know, when talking to your daughter about the season, what were some of her thoughts and what are some of yours? It was, it was definitely an interesting season. Um, you, you kind of got to roll with the punches, you know. I mean, you have to be flexible and it's not always going to go smooth and you you know that's why we have the the text groups and the apps and right everything that keeps things a little more simple sure. you know um kiana just 
wants to be there. She doesn't care how it happens or when it happens or whatever. She's just ready to go when well, we say let's go. You know, she so. wants to play. Oh, right. She's, yeah. she's tough. Where's she going to go to high school? Oh, Galley. Yes. I, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, watch out. Kiana in four years will be a force to reckon with as a freshman out of Galley High School. What would you change about your club? Um, you know, I love the kids. I love the kids. The hardest part about my job, though, is sometimes dealing with parents because, you know, some parents have a lot of ideas. Some parents have, you know, they – everybody kind of has – most of the time – but, 90 percent of my parents are. But don't you kind of, but but at that beginning of the year meeting. Yeah. Don't you kind of let them know I then? Don't kind of. I I direct. Well, I'll I, let you say that. But no, go ahead. I, I direct. I say this is how I run my club. If you don't care how I run my club, care for how I run my club, then there are other opportunities. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I don't mean that in a conniving or in a in a bitter way. I mean like. This is how I run my club. I've worked for other clubs in this county, and I kind of do things differently than other clubs would. Right. Meaning it all falls on me. It all comes back to me. I'm the one that answers the questions. I'm the one that sends out the emails. I'm the one that's doing the website, the accounting, the teams, the jerseys, the uniforms, hiring. and I do everything. What's the hardest part of what you do? Um, is it dealing with the parents? Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. but yeah. that's only like for just a second. I, I, to be honest, this is my passion. I, I'm okay. There's, there's not something that's too hard or too difficult. Staying organized, staying on top of things is something I pride myself on. Right. And um, that is a big priority for me, you know. Um, making sure I have quality coaches is extremely important. And not just having, you know, somebody that, oh, they graduated college and they played volleyball with mm -hmm. their college friends. That's great. I want people that have competed, that have seen it, that have put in blood, sweat, and tears, that understand what it means to please a coach, and now they're asking their athletes to please them. And that's important to me. So I guess the hardest thing is finding quality coaches that can really push the girls outside of their comfort zone with love and with affection. Well, Coach, feels like to me you got two right here yeah. going through some of these bios. You certainly have done an outstanding job of uh, selecting coaches for Beach Wave Volleyball Club. All right, uh, this will end the segment. We'll be back to finish up here from Walk-Ons here in beautiful downtown Vieira. Back after these words from Walk-Ons. It all started with a sketch on a napkin, an idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Beachway Volleyball Club will have many club tryouts July 11th at Wickham Park Community Center starting at 1 p.m. Make sure you visit our website, beachwavevolleyball.club, for all information. Welcome back here to Walk-Ons in beautiful downtown Vieira. Alan Slaughterzinski with Beach Wave Volleyball Club here. And uh, we're going to finish up. And uh, it's been an interesting conversation. And, um, Coach, first of all, thank you for doing this. Uh, I love these roundtables. The future. Yeah. Um, so as you look towards the future, I mean, you know, obviously sand fleas new this year, grass, beach, all of it combined. Beach Wave, six years old now. You started in 2015, blood, sweat, and tears. Um, what does the future, as, as you look forward, yeah. what is your goal for Beach Wave Volleyball Club? My, Give us a couple. Yeah, well, my goal always was to have an, a, one of the elite prominent team clubs in Brevard County. I'm not the type, I don't want to have 30 teams. I have no desire to have, first of all, how, I don't know if there's even 30 quality coaches between me and all of the other clubs. You know, I, 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 whatever, however many coaches I have is however many teams I will have. I will not just take in a group of girls to have a, a team, right? So my goal is always to have between max 16, two of each age group, elite girls playing ball, Working hard for that college scholarship once they get that age, to, that, that time. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Coach, uh, Coach Lynette, coming off of this season, looking at what your team will be next year, uh, what would be your goal for next season? Hmm. Well, <laughs> do we say it? Yeah, sure. Coach Lynette, next season we'll be having a baby. Okay. So I will be coaching so next she, season. That's why. Yes. Congratulations to Coach okay, Lynette. Okay. Yeah. All right. Outstanding <laughs> job. Official, official yeah. Beach Parade Volleyball Club announcement. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. To Christmas Day. Yes. Go ahead. Talk about Breaking it. news. Yes. Well, go ahead. Tell yes. us. Well, so when I found out that I was having the baby, I was like, okay. And then I was like, oh, man. I got to tell Coach Michelle. <laughs> I got to tell Michelle. We were going down to one of the tournaments. I was like, I got to tell you something. And I was like. And she was so, so excited. Then the next second she goes, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She tells me she's pregnant. I was like. That's so fun. I'm so happy with a beach train baby. And I'm like, wait, she does so much. She coaches O'Galley. She does uh, two teams at Beach Wave. So, um, well, will you be there for O'Galley this year? Yes, I'll definitely well, be there. Well, all right. For well, then, then maybe I should better ask the two of you this. Okay. Well, let's talk about O'Galley for just a second because we'll be broadcasting O'Galley a lot. Um, what's the goal this year? Last year, you kind of, you know, you, you, those. Not your senior, so to speak, but now as the program settles in to become more yours, Coach, yeah. and what's the goal this year for you two? Well, definitely, I mean, I coach the JV team, so I want to make my JV players as ready for varsity as they possibly can be. Last year was definitely difficult. We had a limited schedule, so it wasn't, it wasn't nearly the same season that we were used to, but my goal for my JV girls is to make them as ready as they can be for varsity, whether some of them need to be pulled up for varsity and help compete at that varsity level. But that is my main goal for my no. JV girls. Uh, this is another building year for Beach Wave. You know, last year we had two girls that played club ball. This year we have 15 girls that play club ball. Um, when I, you know, uh, it's a building year. It's a, it's a group of girls that are super athletic, but they're a little rough around the edges on skills. You know, they need it, the basics they have, but the in-depth, the knowledge, the, the reason, the why behind what we do things is what we're focusing on this year. Every year I coach high school volleyball. I'm ready for districts. I'm looking for districts. This year's going to be difficult. We have Merritt Island in our district. We have Rockledge in our district. We have Bayside in our district. It's going to be a tough district. Oof. Yeah. Ooh. Welcome. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know, what Angie has over at Merritt Island, she's been there for many years. Yeah. It doesn't take one year or two years to build a program. It takes six, seven years for people to buy into what you're selling, to understand your expectations, and to understand showing up. And that, even that program that started by Connie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Connie Dinnenberg. And so yeah. Just showing up on tryout doesn't cut it. Yep. You, you know, you got to come and you got to you got to work hard over the summer. We had the girls just we were doing extra stuff. We were painting the varsity locker room at O'Galley High School. We're working inside. We have a lot of freshmen coming right now through through O'Galley. Tall freshmen. So um, <laughs> we like those tall girls. I mean, that's something that you can't train. You right. Can't teach height. Yep. Can't teach height. <laughs> So. No, that's for, that's for sure. Coach, how about your team? Looking back on your season, what are your goals for next year? So I come out of every season, or I go into every season, um, trying to train my girls like they're going to play for Coach Michelle on their on her elite, one of her elite teams. And I try to train my girls how Coach Michelle wants to receive them. They show up, they have good basic skills, they understand why we're doing the things we're doing and what they're supposed to do in every situation that I can imagine. I yep. love it. I think it's that's, and I do that every year. It doesn't matter what age group it is. Yep. I always pretend like next year they're going to coach Michelle, and this is what she's going to want from them. Yeah. And uh, Christy, how would you evaluate the year as a whole, and what are you looking for next year for Kiana? Um, you know, I think the team that Kiana played for Coach Audrey and. Uh, Audrey did just that. You know, they the girls had the basics down by the end of season. I mean, I would say, you know, total 360 from where they started. They, right. they really came a long way. Um, as far as Kiana goes, I just want her to, to keep, you know, perfecting the basics and take it a little further each year. Like I said, she's young, and, and I want her to, as she grows in height, she's a tiny little thing, to also grow with, you know, in strength and skills and just, take your game to the next level each season all right final question here and and we'll start well no christy we're gonna start with you 
you get to say the one thing that stands out to you the most as a parent about Beach Wave. You can only pick one thing. What is it? One thing that stands out the most. I would have liked time to think about this one. I um, know. I got you first on this I one, would though. I say that, you know, the sense of community. You know, since we joined on with Beach Wave, every, it, it seems to be everywhere. It's in my social media. It's in our day-to-day -day activities. You know, I communicate with this ladies, these ladies regularly and, and the same with the other families that right. are involved in it. So I would say the community that... I think in order to have a successful club program, community has to be first and foremost. Uh, Coach Audrey, one thing, one thing. When, when I say Beach Wave, what comes to your mind? Uh, I guess I'm going to say culture still. Yeah. I really enjoy the Beach Wave culture. I enjoy our players. I enjoy our coaches. I enjoy our families. Um, I just really, I have a very high opinion of how it's all running and it all runs pretty smoothly. I think that's outstanding. And uh, Coach Lynette, one thing, Beach Wave, um, Word Association. I would say like the work ethic of the players. Mm -hmm. I have girls that are like at the end of practice. I'm like, come on. All right, we got to go. Do your time's up. They're like, well, one more ball, one more ball, one yeah. more. I'm like, guys, we got to go. <laughs> we can't keep having one more ball. Yeah. So definitely the work, these girls could eat, sleep, breathe volleyball every second of their life if they could. Coach, so as we wind this down, yeah. for you, when you look at all of it, where, where, where are you? I'm happy. Yeah. I'm really happy. I'm so fortunate that I get to do what I love. Not just what I love, what I'm passionate about. Sports is been it has been my life since I was five years old, and it'll continue to be my life till I'm 95. You know. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that yes. people need to know about? Yes, well, tryouts. Okay. We have many club tryouts July 11th at Wicca Park Community Center. Um, depending on your age, many club is from August to October. It's a great opportunity for if you're not playing high school ball. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity to prepare you for big club. Um, so we have our many club tryouts, our July, Sunday, July 11th. Um, go on our website, beachwavevolleyball.club, to find out the age group. Um, and then we have our big club tryouts. This year we pushed it up a little bit. Um, it's July 24th at Wickham Park. Um, and then that's for 13 and up. And then on July 27th for 12 and under is our big club tryout. So if you play mini club, you're going to want to come to both tryouts. If you play mini club and you want to play big club, you need to come to mini club tryout, and then we turn around and do big club tryout. Um, we are, we're not taking any new members after November 1st this year. Last year, I it was COVID, so we took in some girls that made it and made tryouts or late joiners. Um, this year, our late joiner cutoff is November 1st, and, and practices start November 1st. So um, always check out the website. Always make sure you're connected on our social media pages. Tryouts are less than two, two weeks away and then less than three weeks away for the big one. So make sure you're there. I'll tell you, this has been a lot of fun for me and an opportunity to get to know, um, you know, other coaches outside of you, Coach Rycroft. Beach Wave Volleyball Club. Let me tell you just uh, one more time this mission statement. To spread the sport of volleyball to anyone willing to learn. It's to teach players life's lessons on and off the court and help further their knowledge through teamwork, sacrifice, and dedication. Beach Wave Volleyball Club is focused on developing into a nationally prominent junior club by having an impact within the Florida region, USAV, and AAU National Championships. This is all to prepare players student-athletes for the collegiate and national volleyball level. For Coach Lynette Shannonhouse, for Coach Audrey Nelson, for our guest parent tonight, Christy Dalton, and, of course, for Coach and Club Director Michelle Rycroft, I am Alan Slaughterzinski here at Walk-Ons in Vieira. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.